Hello, my name is Andrew McCullough, and today I'm going to be explaining how to solve a decaying exponential word problem from our grade 12 calculus and vectors textbook. The question lies on page 290 and is, in, and is question number 2. In specific, the question is asking to solve for how much radon will remain after a certain time period, how long it takes for the radon to reach a certain percentage of its initial value, and the rate at which the radon is decaying at. Let's take a look at closer look at the question. The question states that the mass of radon in milligrams as a function of time is given by the function mRn of t is equal to mO one half to the exponent t over 3.8, where mO is the initial mass of radon and mRn is the mass of radon after time, t in days. Part A says how much radon will remain after one day and one week. Part B says how long will it take for a sample of radon to decay to 25% of its initial mass. Part C says at what rate is the radon decaying at at each of these times. Now one element in specific that my viewers need to keep an eye on is in part C when it says at what rate. At what rate is the radon decaying at each of these times? Now this is specifically important because asking for the rate means that they are trying to find the rate of change of radon at a certain time, which requires us, us to solve for, find the derivative of the equation. These skills were learned from unit five, which is derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. Now, some key points to look out for in how to solve the question. First of all, our initial mass is 100 milligrams, which is not given in this certain area. So I will write that in. MO is equal to 100 milligrams. So knowing that, part A says how much radon will remain after one day and one week. Now we know that one day and one week are, t are our time values. So using our equation with the t in the exponent, we plug in one day, which is equivalent to one, because time is measured in days in this scenario, to solve for our mass of radon. And then we plug in seven for t, which is also our time in days because one week is seven days. So we plug that into T to solve for our mass of radon. One thing you need to look out for is make sure that you do not confuse one week with a T value of one because time is measured in days and one week is equal to seven days. Part B says how long will it take for a sample of radon to decay to 25% of its initial value or initial mass. Now what that sort of is intending, intending on is for us to create the mass of radon to 25% of its initial mass. So being that the mass is originally 100 milligrams, 25% of it would be 25 milligrams. So we set our equation equal to 25 milligrams to solve for the time at which this happens. At which, sorry, the mass of radon is 25 milligrams. Make sure you key on the 25%, which tells you the value or the mass of radon after time. Finally, at, at what rate is the radon decaying at each of these times is question C. And we use, make sure you use the time values from question one, one day and seven days, or one week. And you solve for the derivative and then plug these time values or your t value into the equation to solve for the rate of change at those certain times. Now I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to solve for these questions. So to use as a visual aid for our question, I drew out what I drew an exponential graph here. So on the left side over here, this is, you can see a basic exponential graph. 
As you can see, it's growing all the time when the B value, which is your base, is greater than zero. At this point, you will always have a y-intercept of one, at one. Now, as you can see, our equation at the top has a half to the base. So, over if you focus over to the right, you'll be able to see the new what the what the new graph looks like. Now, having a base value that is between zero and one creates a decaying exponential function. So anything, any number, any base of between 0 and 1 as an exponential function, no matter what the exponent is, will, it will have a decaying sort of trend to it. So as you can see, the equation starts big and gets smaller as it goes from negative infinity to infinity on the Cartesian plane. Hopefully that will help you with understanding as to why our function decreases, as to why our mass of radon decreases over time in days. Because our base is a half, as time increases, the value of radon will decrease as seen by the graph on the right over here, which is a decaying exponential function. Okay, so question 2a says, how much radon will remain after one day and one week? This is asking us to find the mass of radon after a certain time period. So at the top left of my screen, you can see that I have our equation, mrn of t is equal to 100 times a half to the exponent t over 3.8. Now, our variable in this function is the t value, which is in the exponent. And considering that we are trying to solve for the mass of radon, we need to solve for that. We need to plug in a value of t to find our mass of radon. So in this case, what we simply do is we plug in our t value of one day and one week into our equation to solve for our mass. So if I'm going to write on the right side with our new equation of one day plugged in, it will be written as so. MRN of t is equal to 100 times a half to the exponent 1 over 3.8. Now the 1 is what I plugged in. The 1 represents the t value of one day. So now if I solve for this equation, I get, you simply just make sure first of all when you're doing this you do bed mass, so you do what's inside your brackets to the exponent of 1 over 3.8 and then you multiply that by 100 to get your mass of radon at after one day. So if you solve these, if you solve that by just simple multiplication bed mass scenario, you get an answer of 83.3 milligrams. Now as you can see our initial value is 100 and after one day we have a mass of 83.3 milligrams proving that our function is decay. Now after one week actually sorry if you see I made a mistake after our time value right in here of t we're not looking at in terms of t anymore because we subbed in the 1 for our t value so it's MRN of 1. And that makes our equation true. So now going down for one week, trying to solve for the mass of radon after one week, our new equation will look like MRN of 7 is equal to 100 times a half to the exponent 7 over 3.8. Now the thing that I changed was the time value, which in this case is 7 days or 1 week. So you plug in 7 for your t value. Once again, make sure that you're using bed mass. You, you do a half to the exponent of 7 over 3.8 and then multiply that by 100. Now once you do this, you will get your mass of radon after 7 days, which in this case is... 
milligrams of radon. So simply make sure you don't mess up the one week value as a time value of one. Make sure it's seven instead of one. And make sure that you're plugging these values in as T and then you're just using bed mass to solve for the mass of radon. And that's it for question 2A. Let's go to question 2B now. Okay, so question 2C says, at what rate is the radon decaying at each of these times? So, first of all, these times, remember that we're using the times from question A, so that would be one day and seven days. Also, remember it says, at what rate? This means we're trying to find the instantaneous rate of change at certain times. So this means how much radon is decaying at a certain time. So to solve this uh, question, we need to find the derivative of our function. Remember that our function is mrn of t is equal to 100 times a half to the exponent t over 3.8. So there are some certain rules about finding the derivative of an exponential function. So I have at the bottom a little graph just to kind of show you the rules. So if you have a base, our base value in our case is a half. If you have a base that is not Euler's constant, so anything that's just considered b, if you have a base of b and an exponent of x, so just one simple variable, then to solve for that derivative, you take your function, which is b to the x, and you multiply it by the ln of your base. So h of x is equal to b of x, turns into h prime of x is equal to b of x times ln b. Now this doesn't really apply to our question because in our exponent we have an actual function, which is t over 3.8. So when, we ha when you have a base of b and a function as your exponent, there's a different way of finding the derivative. Instead of just multiplying by the ln of the base, you also have to multiply by the derivative of the function in the exponent. So, if you have h of x is equal to b to the f of x, it then turns to find the derivative, it is h prime of x is equal to b to the f of x times ln of the base times f prime of x. So, back to the question. At what rate is the radon decaying at at each of these times? Remember that we are using the times from question A. So our t values are going to equal to 1 and t is equal to 7. So before we get into plugging in our variable numbers, we should first find the derivative. So we have our equation mrn of t is equal to 100 times a half to the exponent t over 3.8. So seeing as though we have a base that is not Euler's constant, we know that we are using the rule of b to the f of x because in our exponent we have a function and a base which is considered b. So to do this we need to multiply by the ln of the base and the derivative of the exponent. So that will look like this. MRN, make sure you're priming it. T is equal to 100 times a half to the exponent T over 3.8. And now our base is a half, so we multiply by ln of 1 over 2. And then T over 3.8 is the same as 1 over 3.8 T. So as you remember, you take the take the exponent of that function, which in this case is 1, you multiply it by the, by, the, by the coefficient, which is 1 over 3.8, and you subtract a, you subtract 1 from the exponent. So in this case, our t has an exponent of 1. You multiply 1 times 1 over 3.8, which is simply 1 over 3.8, subtracting 1 off the exponent, which makes it t to the 0, which is equivalent to 1. So next, so our next multiplication would be ln of a half multiplied by 1 over 3.8. So 
So just to clarify, here we have our original function. And then we have multiplied ln b, so ln times our base. And then 1 over 3.8 is f prime, which is our function in the exponent. It is the derivative of our, of our function in the exponent. So now that we have this, we can simplify and put it into easier terms and rearrange it so that our function is has correct form. So that's going to look like mrn prime of t is equal to ln of a half. And then you can then multiply the 100 times the 1.38, and you get 26.32. Multiply it by the half to the exponent t over 3.8. Now make sure you're not multiplying the half times anything because that is your base, and your base value should always remain constant so that your, so that your bed mass stays the same and you're not messing up any form marks. So now that we have the derivative of our function, we can then plug in the t values to solve for the rate of change at these certain times. So remember with, with all this equations and algebra, we need to remember what our purpose is. And our purpose is to find the rate at what the radon is decaying at at each of these times. So just to do that, now that we have our derivative, the derivative um, the derivative is used to find the instantaneous rate of change. So now that we can plug in a time, we will have the rate of change at that certain time. So our next step is to plug in our t values. mrn prime of 1 is equal to ln times a half times 26.32 times a half to the exponent 1 over 3.8. Now you want to make sure again that you're using bed mass. So you want to so you want to use your a half to the exponent 1 over 3.8 first and then multiply through with the rest of your uh, with the rest of your numbers. So if you use bed mass and just multiply through, you get an answer of negative 15.2 milligrams. Now what this means that is af at after one day the radon is decaying at a rate of 15.2 milligrams. So if our initial value is 100 and we're decaying at 15.2 milligrams, then we're now at 84.8 milligrams of radon left. So knowing this will give us, will shows us how much radon we actually lost at that time period. So after one day we lost 15.2 milligrams. Now they want to know what the rate of radon is decaying at at seven days. So simply what we do is we use the same derivative equation, which is this right here, and use it in terms of seven days. So our new equation in that sense looks like m r n prime of seven is equal to ln of one half times 26.32 times a half to the exponent 7 over 3.8. Now once again, remember to use bed, bed mass. Do a half to the exponent 7 over 3.8 first. Get a value and then multiply through with the rest of your numbers. If you do that, you're left with an answer of negative 5.10 milligrams. Now this means that after 7 days, you're losing 5.1 milligrams of radon. So at seven days, the radon is decaying, has decayed 5.1 milligrams more. Sorry, it was 5.1 milligrams less than it was previously. So at that one time, we are losing 5.1 milligrams of radon. So what this really is telling us is the slope of our line. And as you can remember from our first previous graph, um, an exponential, um, sorry, a decaying exponential function has an appearance like this, where it's decreasing, right? So these are calculations I've just proven accurate because from the graph that we use, 
we know that the slopes are greatest at when the time is least, right? So if our time is less, we know that the slope or rate of change at that time is going to be greater. So this is proven when we plug in our time values into our derivative of our func of our equation because after time in 1 days, we lose 15.2 milligrams and after time in 7 days, we only we only lose 5.10 milligrams. So our calculations are proven accurate and that is how you find the rate at which the radon is decaying at each of these times. And that is all of question 2C for you. Um, on my little lesson on page 290 numbers question 2 A, B, and C of how to solve an, a decaying exponential function. Now if anyone is curious as to how this relates to real life, you should know that there are many different jobs that require using these these skills. Um, some different types of jobs that would be using exponential functions and the derivatives and solving the derivatives of them would be a nuclear engineer, mechanical engineer, an electrician, a biologist, and someone who studies environmental science because all of these relate to rate of change, so how a population is changing, how an amount of a drug is dissolving or disintegrating in the sides of a person's body, um, finding velocity, such things like that. So it is really applicable in today's society. So thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate your time, and thank you so much. Hope you learned a lot. Okay, so question 2B states, how long will it take for a sample of radon to decay to its to 25% of its initial mass? So what it's primarily asking is, how long? What we're trying to solve for is our time value, our t, which is in our exponent. Now having our t value in our exponent is a problem because <clears throat> we can't solve for it. So what we first need to do in this step is set our MRN of t, which is the left side of our equation, to 25% of its initial value so that we can bring the exponent down to solve for t. So let's set this equation up. So first of all, we know that 25% of 100 is equal to 25. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the left side of our equation equal to 25 and then solve for t. So our new equation will look like so. 25 is equal to 100 one half to the t over 3.8. <clears throat> so that's our new equation on the right side. So what we need to do first is get the base alone. So we need to we need to divide by the a value which is 100. <clears throat> and you got to remember that what you do to one side you do to the other. So we're going to divide the right side by 100 to cancel the 100 out and then also divide the left side by 100. Once we do that, we get a new we our equation becomes 0.25 is equal to 1 over 2 to the exponent t over 3.8. <clears throat> so that's as much as we can simplify it without using logarithms. Now, what we need to do to get our exponent, to get our, sorry, our t value out of our exponent is to log both sides. Logging both sides will allow the t to drop down and become and go into the front of the equation so that we can divide out one side so that our t is isolated. So I'm going to show you as follows. So log 0 0.25 is equal to log of 1, 1 over 2. 
Now because I logged both sides, I can now bring this exponent down. So that is now our coefficient of our equation here. So now that we have t over 3.8 in our not in the exponent anymore, we need to isolate for t. So to isolate for t, you divide both sides by log of log a half. So if you plug, so now we have log of a quarter over log of a half is equal to t over 3.8. Now log over a half divided by log, sorry, log of a quarter divided by log over a half, if you plug that into your calculator is equal to 2. So 2 is equal to t over 3.8. Now just basic math, now we just cross multiply so that we can find, so we can have our t value on our own. So you would cross multiply 3.8 multiplied by 2 and then t times 1 to give us our final answer of 7.6 is equal to t. So this lets us know that at 7.6 days, the, the mass of radon will be 25% of its initial value. So one thing to look out for in this scenario is to make sure that you're using your logs properly. If you don't know how to use logs, make sure you seek help before trying to solve for this equation because you might end up confusing yourself. But just one rule to make sure is that if you're bringing in a variable, de variable down from your exponent, make sure you log both sides and the exponent goes in the front of your equation. With those tips, you'll be able to solve any logarithmic sorry, exponential function with a variable in the exponent. In this case, we solved and we got our time value of 7.6 and our time value is in days. So we know that after 7.6 days, the mass of radon will be 25% of its initial mass. Now let's take a closer look at question 2C.